Hi all. In this lecture we will see Kokomo 2. So in the previous lecture we have seen uh, Kokomo model. So Kokomo model was used in the early 80s. So in the early 80s the software were mainly uh, database type of application and all. Uh, graphical user interface was not at all uh, there during that time. But later software uh, has changed. There were graphical user uh, interfaces, interactive programs, everything came. So Kokomo was not applicable for such kind of software projects. Then came Kokomo 2. So it was proposed by BOM in 1995 itself. So later we had component based uh, development and also service oriented architecture came and also web based development, all these came. So because of this, Kokomo was not at all suitable. So Kokomo um, 2 came. The new life cycle models also came, like rapid application development, all this object oriented software engineering, all these models came. So 1995, he proposed a new model for this thing, which is known as Kokomo 2. So we'll see this model in detail. So in Kokomo 2, there are three stages for software estimation. The software is not estimated, uh, can be estimated at the beginning of the project, in midway of the project, and also at the end of the project. So there are three stages for this cost estimation in Kokomo 2. So for the same project, we can estimate cost at three different stages. The first stage is known as the application composition model. So this is mainly this model mainly deals with the prototype development. So after completion of prototype development, we can use this application composition model to estimate the cost of that product. Then in the second stage, it is the early design model. So this uh, estimation is done uh, at the architectural design stage. Uh, when architectural design is complete, we can do another estimation. It is known as early design model estimation. Then after that, we can do one more estimation. It is at post architecture model. So after detailed design and coding stage, uh, we can again, uh, during this de uh, detailed design and coding stage, we can again estimate this uh, software. So uh, this model can be uh, used to estimate at three different stages. So the post architectural model uh, is, uh, 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 is an update for the original, it's actually an update of the original Kokomo model. Mm, and the other two models, application composition model and the early design model can be used to uh, consider, uh, is used to consider two main factors, that is the interactive and uh, GUI based approach. So software is sort of interactive type and for softwares that are of GUI type, uh, this application model and this early design model estimation can be used. So we'll go in detail into this. First one is uh, application composition model. So it is uh, based on uh, counting the number of screens, reports, and modules. So application composition model, it is done af uh, after the software after the prototype is done, after the prototype development is done, we can estimate the cost by counting the number of screens, reports, and the modules, or the number of components that are there. So these components are known as, all these number of screens, reports, and modules are known as objects. So it is nothing related to the object or the programming. We call, uh, the board has called it as objects. The screens, reports, modules, everything is known as objects. So here, uh, effort estimation is done in uh, seven steps. So we will describe uh, what are the steps in this effort estimation in application composition model. So first step is we have to estimate the number of screens, reports, and modules from the uh, uh, SRS document. From SRS document, we analyze that SRS document, and from that SRS document, we will estimate the number of screens, reports, and modules. Then in the second step, what we will do is, we will determine the complexity level of each screen report uh, and we rate it according to three scales, that is simple, medium, and difficult. 
also the um, complexity of reports or the uh, all the modules everything will be calculated so we'll see the complexity level i'll show that in the next uh, slide and in the third step what we'll do is use the weight values as in uh, the tables given so we will use these weight values as given in the table so second step we have to determine the complexity level so the bom has calculated the complexity of screen and report like this so the screen complexity is based on this table so if the number of views is less than 3 and also it will consider number of tables that the views will access so if it is less than 4 then it will be simple or if it is less than 8 it will be simple if it is uh, 8 plus greater than uh, it has to uh, query around more than 8 tables then it will be considered as 8 like that if the number of views is between 3 and 7 so it will take simple medium difficult then greater than 8 it will be medium difficult difficult then similarly for reports so num the number of reports that will be generated so it will be classified according to this table so these are the two tables that will be used to uh, determine the complexity level of screen and report okay so we will determine the complexity of each screen and each report based on this table then we will use the weight values the last step what we will do we use the weight values as in the tables so this is a complexity weight table for screen these are the different object types so screen report regional components will be there so we will determine screens uh, we will determine the complexity of all screens and reports then what we will do if it, if the screen is simple then we will give a value 1 if it is medium it is, we will give 2 if it is difficult we will give 3 for report it will be 2 5 8, 8. so if there are third generation language components then the value will be 10 so like this we will be assigning this weight so this is the third step so we will be assigning weights for everything then after that what we will do is in the fourth step add all the assigned complex value complexity values uh, i will add all the complexity values to obtain the object points so we will add all the assigned complexity values so in the third step we have assigned all the complexity values we will add we will sum up all this this will be the object points this will give this total sum will give the object points then in the fifth step we will estimate the percentage of reuse expected in the system so reuse uh, means it is the amount of pre-developed software that will be used within the system so what all components can be used so if we can use some uh, component that is already existing so we will determine those components which can be used that is already available in the uh, in our company then we will calculate the new object point count we will calculate the new object point count nop as object points so this is obtained from uh, third step uh, sorry fourth step into 100 minus percentage of reuse divided by 100 so this gives the new object point so we will if uh, some components can be reused we have to uh, reduce the, the effort so that's why we are you calculating this new object point nop then in the sixth step what we have to do is determine the productivity using this table so we have to determine the productivity so it is based on the developers experience and also the capability uh, and also uh, the case maturity this is not i case it is actually case so computer aided software engineering maturity and capability how much that uh, the developer team is, has experience and how much they are capable so based on that there is a productivity value so if it is if they don't have any experience and they don't have any uh, computer and software engineering tools and all we have to give a value for otherwise if they are well experienced they do use case tools then we can give a very high value like 50 so you have to give uh, determine this productivity value then finally what you have to do is we have to estimate the uh, effort in person months so effort equal to we have already calculated nop nop divided by productivity will give the effort in person months so we'll get the effort in person months so this is the application composition model uh, estimation so this is done during the prototype development so after completion of srs uh, uh, during this uh, prototype development we can determine this 
the product effort effort required using this uh, seven steps. Then again, in Kokoma 2, we can again determine the cost at early design stage. So it is uh, done during the architectural design stage. So here what we do is, uh, we determine the unadjusted function points. So the unadjusted function points are counted and these are converted to source lines of code. So UFP would correspond to, uh, there are some examples for USP. So for unadjusted function points, uh, it's all, uh, already determined uh, using the past experience. For C language, uh, for example, it will be 128 lines of C uh, will be equivalent to some uh, 29 lines for C++ or it is equivalent to 320 lines for assembly code. So there is some uh, equivalency is there. So if there it is, it has already been defined. So you, uh, based on that, we will be converting it into source lines of code. Then uh, we will, we have uh, seven cost drivers uh, that is being used in this model. There are seven cost drivers that will be used in this model. So these are those cost drivers: product reliability, complexity, extent of reuse, platform, personal experience case support and schedule. So these are the seven cost drivers. So we will be rating these uh, seven cost drivers on a uh, seven point scale. So we will give a value between zero to seven uh, for all these uh, seven cost drivers. Then effort is calculated based on this KSLOC. We have already determined the SLOC. So KSLOC into sum of all these cost drivers. Sum of all uh, cost drivers will give the effort at the early design model. So during early design model, we can calculate using this formula. So we have already seen how to calculate the function point and all. So based on that function point, uh, we have to convert it into source lines of code. So function point can be converted into uh, source lines of code like this. So one function point is equal to uh, 128 lines in the case of C or 29 lines in the case of C++, 320 lines in the assembly code, like that they have determined some factors. So if we can determine that if you are writing in C++, uh, if, you are, if you have 100 lines of code, then it will be converted to, uh, uh, if you have determined that there are uh, five function points, then you can convert it into size, uh, SL or C like you have to multiply by a factor of 29. Like that we can convert that function point into source lines of code. So uh, based on that we can, effort, we can estimate the effort. So this is the early design model. Then again we can uh, determine the cost at post architecture model. So this is done during the detailed design and coding stages. So here the effort is calculated using the formula A into KSLOC. So we have already determined the KSLOC uh, raised to B into sum of the cost drivers. So cost drivers is the same cost drivers that we have already seen. So all these uh, details can be uh, seen in this uh, link. So you need not study all these things. We have to study only this formula. So effort equal to A into KSLOC B raised to B in the sum of cost drivers and these B values is between 1.01 to 1.26. So this is similar to the Kokoma model. So this is actually similar to this. If you see the formula, E is similar to the uh, Kokoma model, the basic Kokoma we are studying. So, but the only difference is that B value uh, is different. Here B values is in the range 1.01 to 1.26. So all those details can be obtained in this link. Uh, more everything is there, it is around a 100 page document. You can go through this Kokomo 2 model who, uh, if you want. But for as per syllabus, you need to study all these things. So that's all. Thank you.